This is a short video to explain why I enjoy winter camping, some precautions to take and some plans to make to make winter camping more fun, and a few pieces of gear that I've discovered over the years make winter camping more enjoyable. I took this photo while walking in the upper peninsula of Michigan, just on a gravel road out in the woods. To me, all I could think about was that Robert Frost poem but it's just an example of the kind of peace and beauty that's out there should you choose to go winter camping. I'll start with one of the more obvious problems. What do you do when winter camping to keep your water from freezing? Now a backpacker knows you can just take a water bottle and bury it in some snow if there is some snow and that provides excellent insulation. Some overlanders have bulk water tanks as part of their rig but then you can run into the same problem. The entire water tank can freeze and do a lot of damage if it cracks and breaks some of the plastic connections or the tank itself. Now I personally use jerry cans, but if you do much winter camping, you'll realize that jerry cans will also freeze pretty quickly. I have some old World War II style steel jerry cans that on a recent trip to the upper peninsula of Michigan, nearly froze solid and I was in danger of bursting them open. But a couple of years ago, I purchased some military surplus gear for my plastic potable water jerry cans. And this is, these are purpose built. They're basically insulated jackets for jerry cans. They have worked so well. In fact, in that recent trip where the World War II cans nearly froze solid, I didn't even have to put any hot water in the plastic cans. They worked just fine uh, and stayed liquid water for about three consecutive days in which it was below freezing. And in this video clip you can see where I had to put the steel jerry cans close to the campfire to try to thaw out the ice that had formed. I then walked over with the iPhone and got some video of the scepter cans inside those insulated jackets still sitting in the steel trailer and there was virtually no ice in either of the plastic scepter jerry cans. Another often overlooked problem when winter camping is your footing. If you think about it, while you're camping you tend to stand in one place over and over like in the spot of ground right in front of your camp stove. When there's snow on the ground, the snow gets packed harder and harder and it gets slipperier and slipperier. So some time ago, I bought an inexpensive pair of crampons or basically cleats that uh, fit like galoshes over your boots. You can see in these still photos, they pop right on and pop right off. These are a tremendous little bit of gear for making winter camping a great deal more fun. It's a lot more fun to winter camp when you can remain vertical without too much effort. Now one other obvious bit of gear you probably want to think about is heating the tent. Now there are a lot of options. Some people use 12 volt sleeping bags. Other people will use forced air heaters. There are some diesel heaters, propane heaters. In my case, I do a pretty popular option. It's a Mr. Heater Portable Heater Buddy. Now I'm not going to get into the whole controversy of do you keep it in your tent? Do you keep it in your tent overnight? In my case, there are two concerns I have with heating the tent. One is keeping the heater high enough that I don't worry about getting my bedding into the ceramic hot block of the buddy heater. The other is carbon monoxide. Even though the heater buddy has built-in protection, I'd recommend no matter what type of tent heater you use, other than maybe an electric blanket, definitely have a carbon monoxide detector inside the tent, just as one more layer of precaution. The YouTubers playing with sticks have a really great video, and I think they attributed it to someone else's video. In this clip, you see the next generation of my tent heating strategy. It's a fan that runs off the thermoelectric effect, and effectively it protects the top of my tent from getting too hot while running the heater buddy. So we'll see how that works on my next winter camp out. One other thing to remember in terms of contingencies is bedding. So when my children were very young, I had them up in the Rocky Mountains along with a few of their cousins and had grossly underestimated how cold it would get overnight. 
I always, since then, bring a lot of lightweight extra blankets like polyester fleeces. So you can see in the brief video clip where I have a bunch of bedding on top of the rooftop tent. So I always, always pack a lot of extra bedding just in case it gets colder than I was expecting. Now in this next clip I narrate a bit about my propane setup and some surprises I had on that trip. That's why it's always important to have contingencies. So I run a 20 pound propane cylinder off a splitter, but I also carry one pound cylinders in case there's a problem. On that particular trip, it turned out my 20 pound cylinder was just about empty, so it was useless to me. I also learned in camping like this, sometimes propane lines can freeze. So it's really helpful to have those one pound cylinders where I can warm them up and use them as needed. Now in terms of this particular trip, it's been enjoyable. Uh, forecast was completely wrong, but still enjoyable. I used a 20 pound propane cylinder. Turned out the one I brought, even though I was sure it had propane in it, was almost completely empty. And one of my two backup cylinders that was brand new had almost no propane in it. Fortunately, the other one did. I was able to fire up my buddy heater with that one. Otherwise, it would have been a lot less fun getting in and out of the sleeping bag. So just a few aspects of cold weather camping that you may or may not find helpful. Another thing you'll find is when there's snow on the ground, and it will be again tomorrow, it is a lot harder to stay warm. Your feet will always feel the chill of being immersed in snow. Another thing I didn't bring on this trip are crampons. I didn't think I would need my uh, ice cleats. Probably don't, but I did uh, when I went and bought the propane. The uh, parking lot at the small grocery store was an absolute sheet of ice. One other top tip I received from a friend about managing propane is regardless of your regulator setup, etc., he said open the tank valve slowly and open the regulator slowly. That can make the difference of that sudden rush of propane that can cause the lines to freeze more quickly. Another thing to remember is never ever trust the weather forecast. This is a little clip looking out my windshield on a recent trip to the upper peninsula of Michigan in which the forecast was for it to be above freezing and dry the whole time we were up there. Needless to say, once you get some slush and wet snow out on the road surfaces, your whole approach has to be different. That's why I say in winter camping, always assume that bad weather is a possibility and make sure you've got the proper gear with you. It's good to remember that a change in the weather is not always bad. And this particular trip was actually kind of fun to go out and do some wheeling in the wet snow. You'll also notice in this clip different driving techniques, right? So I was obviously out of practice. I rode my brakes down that steep slope. Again, it was no risk. I knew where it was down toward the bottom, but you should really use the low gearing to slow you down. Now, as I come around to the right, notice how the driver rear tire jumps. Another thing to remember on snowy ground, you don't always see what's underneath you. So fortunately, even though I hit that stump pretty squarely, it didn't do any damage. One last top tip. It's always a good idea to fire up the car first thing in the morning, even if you don't intend to drive that day, just to give yourself the peace of mind that your battery's not flat and your engine's going to run fine. Hopefully this video excites your imagination a little bit of some of the possibilities of getting out there in winter camping. Remember, no crowds, no bugs flying into your tent, and the beautiful, amazing silence of a snow-blanketed forest are some of the treats that await you if you're willing to take the little bit of extra time and take the few extra precautions to be prepared and to enjoy winter camping.